Welcome to Green New Christian Church. Glad we get to worship with you. I don't know about you all, but uh, I know that like Disney World is not doing fireworks. I think they shipped all of them to our neighborhood last night. I don't know what it was like, but uh, for us, it was crazy all night. So hopefully you got a couple of hours of sleep eventually, and uh, we're glad we get to spend some time together. I want to welcome everybody here uh, physically at our Averett campus, everybody who's joining us on our online campus. It's just kind of a neat season where we have kids and students and uh, adults all together in the same space, and we're thankful we get to do that. Uh, ladies, we want to make sure you know, uh, we had a Fresh Grounded Faith conference that we hosted here last year. It's a great just couple of days of encouragement and challenge for our ladies. Uh, we're going to participate in that again this year, but it won't be here in um, this building. Uh, our ladies will be heading up October 2nd and 3rd to Kokomo, Indiana, um, headed for a Fresh Grounded Faith conference there. So you can hop on the website, uh, get on the women, women's page of the website, and find out a little bit more information, get registered for that. Um, and then uh, one of the best connection points that we have with our community is through our youth sports. We have just hundreds of families each year who gather here and are a part of those. We have youth soccer coming up. Uh, they're in registration right now. And so you can... Um, you can get on the website, head over to the sports page, and uh, this is the last week of the early bird pricing for youth sports soccer, so be sure to check that out. Just as a reminder, uh, our communion time's a little bit different these days, uh, rather than passing trays or any of that kind of stuff in service. Uh, we'll be having our communion after service. So uh, if you're watching online, I want to make sure you spend a little bit of time gathering up some elements, some bread or juice or similar uh, to allow you just to be reminded of the body and blood that were given for us. If you're here with us uh, physically, then um, we'll encourage you to grab your communion elements on your way out and take those and then uh, participate in that later on. Uh, if you uh, want to continue your worship through giving, uh, you can do that through the app. You can do that online. There are baskets if you're here with us today. There are just all sorts of ways um, that you can continue that worship experience. And then we get to the end of our service today. If you're with us online, we'll have time on Zoom where you can head over there for next steps, just an opportunity to connect and pray together on that space uh, if you're here with us, please just hang out for a minute. At the end, we'll have ushers who will dismiss section by section just so that we can take care of each other as we leave this space. Now, let's continue to worship. We're going to sing today uh, one of my favorite hymns, and I'm glad that we get to worship together.
death is your victory. Where, O oh, death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, he gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians 15, 55 through 57. without hope and no place to begin. Your love made a way and let mercy come in. When death was arrested and my life began. Ash was redeemed, only beauty
your displayed on a criminal's cross. Darkness rejoices though heaven had lost. Let's sing it out now. But then Jesus arose with our freedom in My very favorite jobs at GCC is helping people become engaged with our church family. Whether you're in a life group, or you take a men's or women's Bible study, or you attend a, an adult elective on Sunday mornings, it just means for us that you've taken that next step of making this big, this big portion of church to the next level of getting into a smaller group where you meet some friends, and it's fun to come to church when you have friends and you can have rich conversation with them and it's just it's really exciting for me to see that however if you're new sometimes it's intimidating to go into an existing group and we know that so we have prepared some steps for you in classes called the grow pathway every sunday at 11 o'clock it takes place we have a welcome class a vision class a groups class and a serve class and on the fifth sunday a baptism class and you saw me baptize a couple people last week just through that baptism class. We want to make it as easy as possible for you to get to know us and for us to get to know you. We think it's important, so important in fact, that Matt has created a sermon series around it this month called All In. During the pandemic, I met a lot of new people and two new couples that just really, really were just special to me. They not only took all of the Grow Pathway online. They pledged their membership here, and now they're in a life group with Christy and Vince Matthews, ready to meet and also ready to serve. I would normally have them on stage so that you could meet them, or at least their pictures in the bulletin, right? But because we don't have a bulletin, and they're on holiday this weekend, I had them write a couple of sentences for me to tell me what they, they thought about the Grow Pathway. So I'd like for you to meet I'd like for you to meet Tracy and Sandra Mills. Here's what they have to say. We moved from Canton, Ohio to Greenwood last September. It was important for us to find a new church home. We listened to Matt online and then decided to attend in person. We enjoy his messages very much. We quickly felt very content with the people on stage and teachings at GCC. We felt that this is where the Lord would have us serve. So we decided to move forward with membership and the path which we found to be enjoyable and informative. We are now in a life group making new friends while learning more about the Lord. 
There are so many wonderful things offered by the church for all ages. Moving here now feels like home as we continue to grow in our new GCC family. The next couple is Dan and Carol Deacon. During the pandemic, Dan and I moved to the area. Our son, Craig, moved here first. He had been attending, and when we visited him, we attended this church as well. Everyone had been so nice to him and helped him when he was in need that it felt like this is where we belong too. With the pandemic and isolation being in place, we attended the Grow Pathway online. This gave us the opportunity to learn more about the mission and theology of the church. We were able to become part of a life group with others, again, via Zoom online. I tell you, that's kind of hard too. Even though this is a little unusual, it gave us the opportunity to feel a part of the church and to meet with other members. I believe Dan and I now have the great opportunity to serve GCC with this knowledge and the new network of members that we now know. Thank you, the Mills. Thank you to the Mills and the Deacons. We love you already. You're already a part of our church family, and we're so excited that you can grow here with us. If this has inspired you in any way, please come to the Grow Pathway, especially if you're new, at 11 o'clock August 2nd when it resumes in room 501. We'd love to see you there. My name is Matt. I just want to thank Kathy for what she just shared with us. Kathy does a great job of helping a lot of people to get connected. And I want to welcome all of you who are here on our Averett campus. It's so kind of strange saying that, right? This is our Averett campus. And I want to give a shout out to everybody who's watching us on our online campus as well. Together, we are the body of Christ. And as Kathy mentioned, we start a new message series today. Over the last few months, um, COVID has obviously disrupted all sorts of different things. And one of those things has been this monthly series of classes called The Grow Pathway. So like Kathy mentioned, we're going to resume those classes come August, the the 2nd of August. But in the meantime, uh, while we encourage you to think about that and we want to encourage you to attend, we want to go ahead and take some time to unpack some of the things we talk about in those classes because we believe that their content is so central to who we are as a church. So we're going to take these next few weeks just to familiarize all of us with some of this material. This all-in series that begins today and will last through the next three Sundays is really geared for two specific groups of people. Number one, this is for all those of you who are new to Greenwood Christian Church. I know that it may seem strange to hear this right now because we're, we're spread out in a number of different places, but last Sunday alone we had 10 new families that were here on site with us. We're really excited about that. If you're with us and you want to know more about who we are and you want to know more about where we're headed, if if you're curious about how to get more involved, then I just want to say welcome. I'm glad you're with us and we hope that these next few weeks will be helpful to you. There are a number of ways that you can get to know us and you may have discovered these already, but we don't ever want to assume anything. Our website, greenwoodchristian.com, is always there for you to take a look at. We have a Greenwood Christian Church mobile app. It's a free download from wherever you get your apps and it is a, a really easy, user-friendly way to get connected to some of our web tools. You can follow us on Facebook and Instagram. If you're a social media user, lots of important information goes out that way. And then we also send out a weekly email. And there's a spot right on the main page of our website, at greenwoodchristian.com, where you can sign up to be a recipient of those weekly emails. So we want you to know that if you're new to Greenwood Christian, that we've been thinking about you and we want to be helpful to you. Now, the other group of people that this series is really geared for is everybody else, okay? Um, If you're not new to Greenwood Christian Church, and that would be true for a number of us, if you are a, a GCC veteran, we're really thankful for you too. And what we want to make sure that we all understand is that every single one of us who is a part of the body of Christ is called by God to welcome others. 
We are called by God to introduce others to Jesus. We are called by God to help each other grow, and we want to equip all of us to do that. So what that means is, whether this information we're about to unpack is brand new to you, or whether this is a review of some things that you've heard before, it is vitally important that we all understand it and that we be able to share it with others. So I hope that you will be all in with us for these next few weeks of this series. Now, when it comes to church, our understanding of a particular English word sometimes creates some confusion. We use this word membership, and and it can become confusing because in a lot of contexts, membership is an issue of status and privileges. You know, a, a country club membership, for example, it allows you to play golf there. If you have a membership at a fitness center, then you are entitled to go and use their workout facilities. If you have a membership at Sam's or at Costco, that means that you can walk in and show them your card and you're allowed to shop there. But the church is very different. The church is not a private club. See, the church exists not just to benefit those of us who are members. The church actually exists to reach and to serve those who are not members. We're perhaps the world's only outside-in type of organization. You've noticed already there's no, there's no elite parking. There's no preferred seating. God loves all people. So whatever we have to offer as a church, we offer to everyone. And that means a couple of important things. That means that in our church, everyone who is on the outside is welcome. It also means that everyone who is on the inside and calls this place home has responsibilities. Now, the rewards of following Jesus are amazing. We're talking about forgiveness of our sins, the gift of God's Holy Spirit, the encouragement of his people, eternal life, for crying out loud, right? I mean, but church membership is much more about purpose than it is just about personal perks. See, the church has a mission, and every member of God's family has a role to play in accomplishing that mission. So we want to help you know Jesus, and we want to help you build life-changing relationships with others. We want to help you learn, we want to help you grow, we want to help you serve, we want to help you become more like Jesus. So at the end of the day, our desire, you could say it like this, our desire is to help you engage, not just attend. Our desire is to help you belong, not just believe. Our desire is to help you become a contributor to the work God is doing here, and not just a consumer of spiritual goods and services. But the most important thing for you to know about Greenwood Christian Church, where I want to start right up front, is that we are all about Jesus. We believe that knowing Jesus is our most important objective in life. I mean, Jesus is the Bible's central character. His message is often referred to as the gospel. And gospel is simply a Bible word that means good news. The good news of the gospel has been summarized in a beautiful way uh, at a website called Life in Six Words, and I just want to unpack this with us very quickly. We can summarize the good news of the gospel in six sentences. Number one is this, God created us to be with him. People talk a lot about words like religion and spirituality, and that's because a desire for connection with God is hardwired into each of us. It's just a part of who we are. Every person, every one of us is created by God to enjoy a relationship with him. We are made in God's image, scripture says. We are made to play a unique role in his creation. God made us to be spiritual and God made us to be relational. At the same time, we're not robots. From the very beginning, God has allowed us to choose whether to love or ignore him. God allows us to choose whether we're going to obey him or rebel against him. God allows us to choose whether we're going to worship him or walk away from him. And that reality is the basis for the second important truth, and that is that our sins separate us from God. Scripture tells us that the very first people that God created took that freedom that he gave them and they chose poorly. And their disobedience, which the Bible refers to by way of a little three-letter word called sin, their sin introduced pain and conflict, and decay, and death into our world. The Apostle Paul wrote in Romans chapter 5 in the New Testament that sin entered the world through one man. That's a reference to Adam, the very first person God created, and Paul goes on to say, and death 
through sin. And in this way, death came to all people because all sin. That's Paul's way of saying that throughout history, ever since Adam's original sin, humanity, all of us, have consistently assumed along the way that we know best, we have consistently rejected God's authority in different ways. Romans chapter 3, verse 23, insists that all, that's 100% of us, there's no one excluded from this category, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And that decision, according to Scripture, comes at a price. Because according to Romans 6, 23, the wages of sin is death. I'm curious, how many of us in this room are currently employed? Whether you're doing chores around the house or you're working a a 40-hour-a-week job, we, we know a thing or two about how all of those things work. When your employer pays you, that shouldn't come as a surprise to anybody, right? I mean, the paycheck is kind of the point. That's, that's why we go to work day in and day out. According to Scripture, our paycheck for rebellion against God is death. And the reason for that is because of something that the Old Testament stresses back in the, the book of Psalms, and, and Scripture stresses throughout the Bible. Psalm chapter 5 says, You are not a God who is pleased with wickedness. With you, evil people are not welcome. The point is that God, who is the source and the giver of life, is holy. And unholiness cannot exist in God's presence. Our sinfulness clashes with God's goodness, so we have to understand that, number three, sin cannot be removed by good deeds. Next to God's perfect holiness, there is not one of us in this room, there's not one of us in this church, there's not one of us on planet Earth who measures up. The Bible's commands are not a ladder that we climb in order to earn our way to God. They simply illustrate to us how utterly incapable we are of moral perfection. In the Old Testament, when Israel would sin, God required them to sacrifice animals on an altar. Think about that for a moment. Can you imagine having to kill an animal every time you lied? Every time you gossiped? Every time you lost your temper? Every time you mistreated someone, I mean, we would go through an awful lot of goats, right? A lot of guinea pigs would meet their end that way. What God wants, ultimately, from us is not sacrifices. What God wants from us is our recognition of our need for him. Those animal sacrifices, the book of Hebrews tells us in the New Testament, they never actually took away sins anyway. Their purpose was to anticipate Jesus, whom Scripture calls the Lamb of God, the only one who can restore us to a relationship with God and the one who would come and give his life as the last sacrifice for sins that would ever be needed. So the fourth statement we need to understand is that paying the price for sin, Jesus died and rose again. The centerpiece of everything we celebrate when we gather for worship is that 2,000 years ago, on a cross outside Jerusalem, God dealt once and for all with this sin barrier that separates us from him. See, rather than leave us isolated from him, Jesus the Son came to earth and he willingly died in our place on a cross to pay the wages of sin for you and for me and for everyone else. Jesus himself said in John chapter 3, if you've heard any scripture at all, you've probably heard this one. Jesus said, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. And then Jesus went on to say, for God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. See, Jesus' sacrifice was an amazing, it was a loving, it was a completely undeserved gift. Romans chapter 5 says that God demonstrates his own love for us in this, that while we were still sinners, while we were still in rebellion against God, before we had even joined God's team, Christ died for us. But the best part of the story is that Jesus rose from the grave, never to die again. Jesus has conquered death, and he promises that those who believe in him will never die. In other words, statement number five is that everyone who trusts in Jesus has eternal life. The second half of Romans 6.23 is as powerfully important as the first. For the wages of sin is death, we've said that part already, And then Paul goes on to say, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus, our Lord. 
God invites us to be saved from our sins and receive eternal life, not through our religious behavior, but as a gift. We receive this gift through a relationship with his son Jesus, who paid the debt that we owe. Jesus said in John chapter 17, now this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. The Gospel of John goes on to tell us that the reason Scripture was written in the first place was so that you and I could have a relationship with Jesus and discover a new life in Him. The Apostle John wrote late in that Gospel, he said, Jesus did many other miraculous signs in the presence of His disciples, which are not recorded in this book. John's just saying there's a whole lot more where this came from. But these are written, he says, that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing, you may have life in his name. Now, don't miss this next part. Statement number six, life with Jesus starts now and it lasts forever. You and I receive new life when we trust and we follow Jesus. Scripture teaches that we respond to God's gift of salvation. And when we talk about salvation, we're just talking about forgiveness of our sins. We're talking about eternal life, being saved from guilt, being saved from death. Scripture instructs us to respond to this gift that God has given us in several different ways. This is not a step-by-step checklist where you go down the list, check things off, and say, there, I'm, I'm done. These are actually ongoing, practical instructions about what following Jesus looks like. Scripture teaches us, for example, in response to God's gift, to believe. It's a word that means to trust, to have faith that Jesus is who he says he is. The Apostle Peter said in the book of Acts chapter 10, he said, everyone who believes in Jesus receives forgiveness of sins through his name. Now, it's important for us to understand that that word believe, when we encounter that word in the New Testament, it means more than just brain knowledge. It's more than just facts that we know. It means to make a commitment. So everyone who commits to follow Jesus, trusting that he paid the price for our sins, receives forgiveness. And we express that commitment not only when we believe, but when we repent. Repent is a a word you typically only find in Scripture, and it just means to make a U-turn, to make a 180 from the selfish, sinful way that most of us are inclined to live on our own. It means to change our thinking and our actions. Peter said in Acts chapter 3, repent and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out, that times of refreshing may come from the Lord. To repent simply means to stop doing what God says not to do and to obey his instructions. And that looks different in each of our lives. I mean, depending on on who you are and, and where you're at in your journey, it could mean that repentance for you right now means trying harder to obey your parents. Maybe it means being more committed to your marriage than you typically have been. It might mean trying to be more helpful to others or or striving to be more honest or, or simply to be more generous with your resources. So scripture instructs us to believe, to repent. Scripture also urges us to confess. And that's a word that just means to tell the truth about what we believe. To unashamedly acknowledge Jesus as Lord, to say I am his and he is mine and I don't care who knows that. Romans chapter 10 says, if you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are are justified, that means declared righteous, and it is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. Have you confessed your need for Jesus to save you? That is an all-encompassing statement about our lives, and it's an important thing for us to acknowledge before him. Scripture urges us, in response to God's gift, to be baptized, to be immersed underwater in a symbolic picture of Jesus' death and burial and resurrection. In Acts chapter 2, the apostle Peter told a crowd, many of them were the very same people who had been there a few weeks earlier and crucified Jesus. Peter said, repent, make a U-turn, And be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. See, to be baptized is to admit that you have sinned. It's to say, I am guilty and I need to be cleansed. To be baptized is to believe that Jesus died to pay for our sins in a way that no one else could. 
To be baptized is to accept God's free gift of salvation by his grace, to acknowledge there's nothing that we can do to be worthy of it. And to be baptized is to invite Jesus to come into your life. Catherine and Melissa were baptized last Sunday. We got to celebrate that with them. Have you been baptized? Is that a next step that you need to take? Now, I said just a minute ago that these are all ongoing things. I do need to clarify. Baptism is the one part of this that is not an ongoing thing because ongoing continuous baptism is called drowning. And we don't like to do that to people. But, but believing and repenting and, and confessing are ongoing things, as is this one. Just the idea of living for Jesus. It means to surrender to his authority. The Apostle Paul wrote in Romans chapter 12, listen to these words. Paul says, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, in view of his kindness to us, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God, this is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. In other words, Paul says worship is not just a song that we sing on Sunday mornings. It is obeying God in our thoughts, in our words, and our actions. That's what it means to offer ourselves as living sacrifices. Now, like I said a few minutes ago, this is just the launch pad for where we're headed for the next few weeks, but we want you to understand as clearly as as possible that at Greenwood Christian Church, our main thing is not a building. Our main thing is not a pastor or a logo or a car magnet or a t-shirt or a website or a service time or a mission statement. Our main thing is Jesus. We are all about Jesus. The Apostle Peter said in Acts chapter 4 that salvation, forgiveness of sins, eternal life, escape from death, Salvation is found in no one else. For there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. And because we are all about Jesus, we want to honor and we want to reflect him in everything we do and everything we are as a church. And we want to do everything we can to help you know and follow Jesus personally. Knowing Jesus is our most important objective in life. And because knowing Jesus is our most important objective in life, I want to invite you, especially if you're new to our church, to join us next month, to join us in August for the next go-round of the Grow Pathway. We just want you to better understand who we are and how to get connected here. But even more important than that, and something that's available to you even sooner than that, is I want to invite you to follow Jesus for life for the life that he gives you for the rest of your life here on earth. We would love to help you meet Jesus. We would love to help you trust him to save you. And I don't know what your next step looks like in that process. It's, is it simply acknowledging for the, the first time that Jesus is the one that you need, that Jesus is capable of helping you do that? I mean, what life-damaging sin do you need to let go of? Is there something that you need to repent of? Do you need to confess your faith in Jesus to save you? Do you need to acknowledge that out loud to him and to others? Is it time for you to obey him by being baptized? Whatever your next step is, we are here to help you take it. We'd love to pray with you. We'd love to talk with you. If we can help you to wrestle through questions, we're here for any of those reasons. So in just a moment, I'm going to lead us in prayer. And then after we pray, if you're here on campus with us, you'll find a few of us at the back of this room, and you would be welcome just right after our prayer to make your way to the back of the room, and we can have a conversation right here, right now, about whatever is going on in your heart and your mind. If you're watching us live from home right now, you're going to see a Zoom ID and password on your screen, and we will have members of our staff available there to talk and pray online with you in just a moment. And if you're watching this service at any other time, you can always reach out to John Beach or myself. Just send us an email. We would love to follow up with you and connect with you in any way we can. We want you to be all in. We want all of us to be all in together with who Jesus has called us to be. And we hope that these next few weeks will be instrumental, just improving understanding for all of us of what that means. But especially if you're brand new, we want you to, to get acclimated as quickly as possible. And if you're not brand new, I want to encourage you, don't see this as an opportunity to check out, because I've heard this before. See this as an opportunity for us to embrace together this mission God has given us. And let's come alongside those who are new 
and help them to take whatever next step it is that God is leading them to take. It's great to be with you this morning. Join me in prayer if you would. And if there's a next step that we can help you to take, we'd love to do that. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we're so grateful this morning for the freedom that you give us. Lord, as a a nation, we have just celebrated independence and and freedom uh, yesterday. And we are grateful, Father, for those those liberties that we are afforded as citizens of this place. But Father, we recognize as we gather here this morning that the freedom we need most is a a bigger thing than a constitution. Lord, it's a bigger thing than a system of government. It's it's a bigger thing than just a a life that is full of economic opportunities or, or civil liberties. Father, what we need more than anything else is the release from the bondage of sin that only Jesus can offer. And so Jesus, we thank you for putting yourself in our place at the cross and making new life available to us. We ask for your help in in trusting you, taking you at your word, that you are the only one who can make things right. Help us to acknowledge those places in our lives where there is sin that needs to be repented of. Help us to to publicly, with our, our mouths and with our lives, declare who you are. And Father, help us just daily to offer to you our bodies as living sacrifices. Thank you for the opportunity to share these moments together, Lord, use us. Father, please use us to make your gospel known in places where it currently is not. We love you, and we thank you for the transforming work you're doing in us at this very moment. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
until the ushers dismiss you. Thank you.